can't, can't get out of there. Okay, discard it all. So there we go. War is good for business. Now the next few missions are Treasure Trading Station, Task Force Hippocrates, and uh, these are all... Oh, Deborah and Whiskey. The, all of these are kind of gruntish. Like, perhaps I should clarify what I'm talking about when I say a grunt mission. The, you know, these aren't missions that contribute to the greater arc. They're just sort of you doing stuff to do stuff. Um, treasure Trading Station might... Or was that Task Force? It was either Treasure Trading Station or Task Force Hippocrates with the big fight against like the the whole shitload, the whole shitload of Klingons at the very end. Uh, that one does, but you know neither of them really feel particularly vital to the to the overall Klingon story arc. Uh, it's it's just kind of stuff to do, basically. It's a mission you're sent on. And, uh, that, that's what I call, that's what I consider to be a grunt mission. It's a mission you get sent on just for there to be stuff to do, and just for there to be a reward for you that you can gain, that you can use to get better stuff. Uh, and, uh, this is the first story arc in the game, so of course you're seeing it a lot. Uh, nothing overly impressive in these missions, I want to say. You won't start to see really impressive... Well, you'll, you've already seen uh, Diplomatic Orders and Pajem. Oh, that, those are the same fucking mission. I'm an idiot. Uh, Diplomatic Orders and uh, Stranded in Space, which are remastered and quite a bit more pro impressive than their original versions. When we get to City on the Edge of Never, uh... You're going to see some pretty cool stuff. You're just, you're, that's when you start seeing some interesting stuff. Uh, they don't really start having a lot of fun with the engine. You're going to see them having, like, a do Doomsday Device. You're going to see... It's going to be... F Doomsday Device will look like a whole different game when we get to it. And we're going to be getting to it really quick, because I'm, I'm taking these a lot faster now. Uh, we're going to be getting to that one really quick. And it's going to it's gonna seem like a different game when we're playing it. You're, you're going to be shocked at... at how different it is and how much of an improvement over the missions we've been doing it is. Uh, and then we're going to get back to the Romulan missions. They won't start... They de they didn't start really having fun with the engine, because Doomsday Device, uh, Diplomatic Orders, and Stranded in Space are remastered missions. You know, these, This is not the way they were when the game launched. This is how they are now, far superior. Um... Except for one caveat in Doomsday Device. There's one, there's one problem I have with Doomsday Device, but that's when we get to it. Uh, you'll, you'll see what I mean by the time we get to Doomsday Device. You'll see what I'm talking about. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more as we go along. Uh, but they didn't really start having fun with the engine. Like, playing with what the engine could do until... Trapped. Trapped in the Romulan arc was the moment where I was like, oh, that was fucking awesome. You know, it was the first time where I went, oh, that's awesome. You know. It was the it was the first time where I where I was really not really knocked off my feet, but pleasantly surprised at something that happened in a mission that was just really cool. Um Although it bugged out on me the first time, so the first time it was funny. The first time, the second time it was just, it was awesome. Uh, but that's a ways away. But you'll see in Doomsday Device. Doomsday Device is going to be so much different from what you've seen before. Even more different than the two other remastered episodes you've seen, Stranded in Space and uh, Diplomatic Orders. It's going to be so totally different from those. It's unreal. It's really awesome. I really love what they did with that mission. Or, uh, Gozer. It's Gozer, right? Gozer the, Gozer's the one who's working on the remastered ones. Uh, now he's been working on the special task forces, and you, you son of a bitch, you added the, you added the damn shield wall. <laughs> you added the damn shield wall and the cure. 
Why? Why did the cure need a shield wall? Um, what I'm talking about, what I'm talking about when I say that is the, the infected special task force. Once you get to the final boss of that, uh, there's the final boss room. Once everybody's gone into it, or hopefully everybody's gone into it, you kind of all have to rush in at once. Uh, the moment you open fire on something, the moment you actually engage in combat, a force field pops up, blocking the entrance. If you die in that room and respawn, you respawn outside the shield. You can't get back in. So, either your group has to some has to get by without you, or everyone has to... If you respawn, either your, your group has to get by without you, which is hard. Very hard. You want two people in the middle running interference for the people along the walls. You want them clearing out the Borg. And keeping their fire off of them so they can take down the force fields and uh, lower the shield around the central uh, shield generator so that you can trigger the boss fight. So, if you know, either they have to get by without the fifth party member or they all have to die and respawn and you have to start over again and it's aggravating as hell. I was in there with a the group for like hours. Hours. Reviving people because they could not jump. Like, this this is a mission which requires you to platform It's an MMO boss fight that requires you to platform jump. You know, it's... And there's, like, instant kill, like, lava. It might as well be lava. It's actually plasma. Uh, but there's, there's, like, instant kill stuff all along the floor. And if you're dropping it, you last maybe a second and a half, and then you die. So somebody has to constantly be reviving people who can't jump. And more often than, than not, they'll click respawn and respawn outside, and you'll have to do the whole thing over again. And why? Why would you do that? You know... And I'm not bad mouthing Gozer. Like I'm, I'm not. I'm not bad mouthing Gozer. I love. I love the work he's done with the remastered episodes. Uh, you know, I. The man works hard, and it shows, especially with Doomsday Device, especially with Doomsday Device. But um, why? Why did the cure? I like the cure was already. Like I know you and, I know you got rid of one of the one of the giant. Uh, force field walls that you have to get through by uh, playing leapfrog with the with these shield generators where Borg are constantly trying to reset them and you're constantly trying to fend them off. Cure was all, and I know you got rid of them, but Cure was already a bear. That mission was already a bear to do. Why did we need a force wall to make it worse? You know, why did we need a force wall to make it harder? That's where I got the. Uh, the deflector from the Borg deflector that gives me the uh, what is autonomous regeneration sequencer that recovers half my damn health is I got it from the cure and I'm never going back in there now never ever never ever never ever never ever it's no <laughs> screw that oh that was so it, it was still hard it was hard and we had like a we had like a veteran S, uh, STF runner with us, telling us what to do. It was still hard. It was still aggravating. It was still very glitchy. Uh, there, there were, there were occasions where the Borg would spawn aggroed on us, and I would like die immediately. And the guy leading us would go, "That's no, that's no problem. That's no problem. That's a known glitch." And again, not, I'm not bad mouthing Gozer. Gozer, from what I, from what I've been seeing, uh, on, you know, on the forums and on Twitter has been working very hard on fixing up the cure, uh, chasing down the various glitches on it, giving it a little love, and I appreciate that very much. And I'm sure the, spe the people who play the special task forces appreciate that quite a bit. Uh, I will probably have to run through Kittimer Accord at some point, because I want me my, my Science Borg B.O. Uh, before it gets remastered, because once it gets remastered, I don't know what they're going to do with it, or if that bridge officer is still going to be accessible. It might be. It probably will be, but, you know, just why... Why... Safety first, I guess. You know, I'm why wait to get it? Uh, and I don't have to activate him now. I can just ha keep him in my bridge officer lineup. Which is admittedly very full. 
all I have, like, I have a bunch of, like, very rares and, uh, rares and uncommons. Uh, so I can just sort of keep them in here. And so, you know, so, you know, I have them, and when I have a bridge officer slot, I can just activate them. But, yeah. Not doing cure again. <laughs> not going through the cure again. Um... Although there are no more regenerations nodes, also thank God, not not regeneration nodes, but the um, the distribution nodes. It's been kind of a rule. I mentioned Elite Force a lot, and I'm you know particularly through the constant mentioning of the Hazard Team, and this is another thing that goes back to Elite Force is the distribution nodes. Whenever you were playing Elite Force, the first thing you looked for on a Borg level was the Dis node. They were dotted all over the level, and you took them out to to kill the Borg that were near you. And uh, it was kind of it was kind of something vital that you had to do. And so it kind of really it came naturally when I ran the STF for the first time when I was playing them. It, it sort of came really naturally to go after the distribution nodes first. I didn't really need to be told that. I thought, ooh, interlinked distribution node. That sounds familiar. That better die first. That's got to die now. So, um, yeah. But those are gone, thankfully. Borg are so much more fun. Shotgun and melee kit, the Borg are fun. That's amazing. I, I think I've mentioned this before, but it, it bears repeating. The Borg are entertaining to fight now. That is unreal. But um, I think I've rambled on long enough. And uh, next time, I it's either... It might be Treasure Changing Station or it might be Task Force Hippocrates. It's one of those two. Uh, could be Hippocrates? It's probably Hippocrates. Pretty sure. And I think Task Force Hippocrates will take us into Pycanus. Another sector block right next door. But that is then, and this is now. And uh, this has been Star Trek Online Rise of the Red Shirt. War is good for business. And I will see you guys later. So, later.